Hello and welcome to Game Over Year, the video game podcast created by Gamers for Gamers with your host, Leon. Dave, hello! The stag built himself, he's melted self. Right oh now. mate, yeah, I think we're all feeling, other than Dave, we're all feeling that melting feeling See, right now. This is the good thing about living in a uh, land filled with potatoes. The potatoes drag all the heat away, so it's <laughs> nice. I like it, I like it. Uh, I mean, Dave, you were... You were absent last week as such because of I your, was, yes. your potato internet uh, but I'm getting a new potato internet, a new potato router <laughs> with new and improved tubes uh, you know, an extra potato uh, yes <laughs> well that's cool man, uh, I mean while while you're away, I mean I suppose we need to kind of get into some of your thoughts uh, on E3, uh, did you actually manage to check out any of E3 while we were or did you not? Yeah, see, uh, I was going to do the whole... I called uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2 from the week before where I sort of casually threw aside a, an off comment saying yeah, they'll just tease us with Beyond Good and Evil but not really. Uh, and then they went and did that. The bastards to keeping the dream alive. So mm-hmm. I was very excited to see that. But uh, at the same time, just still going, oh my God, just when is it going to come out? Just give it to me now. Um, <laughs> It's, it fills me with dubiousnessness because it's a prequel um, okay. and it also involves multiplayer. So I'm not sure if they're just going to turn it into some sort of MMO nonsense and using the giant universe. But there's a website you can go to and you can sign up to be a space monkey and they will send you news and information. And I, I meant to have done it and I forgot but uh, I will do it at some point, unless I forget again. But uh, apparently there's a game you can play called Spot the Easter Eggs, because the trailer had a ridiculous number of various Easter eggs in it that was based off all the uh, other games that they've done, Uh, not just Beyond Good and Evil. I think there was a couple of rabid rabbits hiding in there as well. (laughs) Um, So that was that game. Um, I did kind of half-assed look at it. I, I deliberately didn't look at any of it because I wanted to sort of be the sort of, I don't know anything, tell me all about the cool stuff that I've missed type of person in the show. And then obviously I didn't turn up, so I was like, well, boss, I can't really do that now, so I might actually have to look at stuff. Uh, I did see your Facebook chat that just went on for many, many pages as you were discussing the various events that were happening. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, I was busy doing work and desperately ranking up in Plants vs Zombies Heroes, more on that later, to get involved in any of the E3 shenanigans. But I did see that uh, there was games. Um, there were there were definitely games there, and yeah, some of them some, were good. Some of them games. Uh, no, the there, what was that one? Dim games. Dim games. Dim games. Uh, there was the one where you were in a, in a mech suit. Because I watched your episode, I watched your program uh, after, obviously, it went live and on YouTube. And there was that one where you were running around in some sort of mech suit, flying through a planet, and you were all getting very excited about that. Yeah, that Anthem. Nuts. Anthem. It, it looks incredible. And to be fair, like at the end of the last show, we kind of were going, right, okay, well, we'll wait until our next show when Dave's back and things like that. And we'll kind of maybe sort of have a quick discussion of what kind of, you know, the game that kind of stole the show. Uh, and for me, like, hands down, it was definitely Anthem. Because of the fact of that, you know, it was built up a little bit in the EA thing. They teased it. There were a massive cock tease going, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, we're not going to show you anything properly until the Microsoft conference tomorrow. And then, you know, so like everyone's sort of there with bated breath waiting for it to appear on the Xbox conference. And then, you know near the end it finally well so i think it was the end wasn't it uh it was that it appeared and everyone was just like oh shit this looks pretty fucking awesome so i mean for me like that kind of stole the show i'm sure you know for other people it might have been something on the along the lines of you know maybe the uh the raven rabbits with the the mario kind of thing i think some people don't know uh (laughs) no but the the thing with anthem that made me go oh my god that's amazing Hmm. Just the platform it was, then sort of diving into the forest, diving through the tunnel, and then back up, and just it always amazes me how big the sort of um, the bubble of the game is created is getting because it's like 
you have to create that universe in order to move around in it. But it's kind of like, but there is no join between it. But it's just like the quick loading times is so quick that it's almost minimal. And it's like just the amount of coding that goes into that sort of thing is just amazing. And obviously it looks pretty as well. But it's just the technology behind it to actually pull off something like that is just getting impressive. Because I still remember, you know, back in the day, Spectrum, you know, you want to play a game wall this basic bat ball thing and you have to go off and make a cup of tea while you're waiting for it to load you know and we've moved on so fast now to get into these sort of amazing masterpieces and obviously you know this means but there's still going to be better stuff coming in the future anyway uh things that i was excited about um that weren't really mentioned was uh, kingsway do you know anything about this one no i don't think so Kingsway is, speaking of retro stuff, is a RPG roguelike game based off Windows 95. So you have a pop-up window and it'll be like, you're going on a quest. And then another pop-up little window appears and it'll be like, this is the map you need to go to. And then you'll toddle off and then another pop-up window will appear and it might be an enemy. And so you have to then click on that window. And it's oh, all based, yeah. No, you know, I, think you, I think you showed me a little video of this actually now thinking about it. Yeah. But they, uh, they brought it up at E3, and uh, a lot of people went, this is amazing. Uh, if you need to play music, uh, you have to open a Winamp-esque program and then hit play. So you have a separate window for the music. And it's just a very, very clever concept. So that one I'm looking forward to. Uh, another one um, which I thought had disappeared off the face of the planet. Uh, God, this must go back five years can't be that long shit it's a puzzle <laughs> game uh set of windows so you have a and it's like a, a comic book you know how you know the comics have got the various panels so there'll be a panel that you click in and it will then activate uh say you like a, a dude there'll be a door or something and you click on the door and then the dude will move into the next panel and then something else might happen and then you might go down a ladder or something so then it'll activate the panel underneath um and it tells this story but it's all through a sort of pu puzzle clicking but then you might have to go then go back to a previous panel that you've used but then you can do stuff where say for example um one of the puzzles is like a you have to make a, a, a coin and mm. there's a picture of a sun in one panel and there's something else in another panel and you have to move the two panels together so then that will overlay to make the item or it might be something else to then progress the story it's just mind-blowing levels of oh my god what the fuck is going on yeah, what's really, the name what's the name uh, of the game the game is called go goro goa uh it's out on pc and mobile um it's Really, really pretty. It's very pretty music. It's just very relaxing and just amazing. And I didn't think of anything of it. And then obviously it popped up in E3. It's one of those hidden gems. Definitely worth checking out. Mm. Uh, other than that, the pointy clicky thing that you saw, I talked on the show last week, the um, sort of the Monkey Island-esque one, I was kind of like, ooh, that looks cool. That's cool. Uh, we got uh, Cody in the chat. Uh, thanks for joining us again. Uh, sorry about the uh, the last one. If you were watching live, we did randomly just drop out from Twitch and just couldn't get back on. Uh, so we just kind of finished the rest of it by ourselves. But thanks for coming uh, and tuning in again, Cody. Uh, just to quickly go through some of the chat things there. He was sort of a... Uh, I, yeah, I, I mean, I just thought the Assassin's Creed Origins thing was like kind of a funny thing to mention. He was saying the uh, it looks decent, but not eight hundred dollars US, yeah, mm. uh, d you know, US dollars decent. Uh, it's because they have got that this the ridiculous special edition that has got so much shit in it. Uh, I think yeah, there's also just, uh, that there's only going to be I think it was nine hundred and ninety nine of them worldwide as well. So yeah, it's going to be pretty rare. Uh, and uh, I don't know. I mean, people are going to sink money into that. Uh, I know they are because they, you know, they want that kind of rare, uh, kind of th that thing, you know, that you can kind of hold on to. How I mean, much was not the me. Destiny one? The Destiny one was pretty damn expensive. Not nearly that. It was like three hundred, I think. Yeah, it's they are getting more and more outlandish, though. It's like eventually. What was the Saints Row one? A million, wasn't it? 
Oh yeah, fuck yeah, they yeah, did the do that. One with a fucking Lamborghini. Did they actually sell one of those? I don't know actually. That's that's a good that's a good point. I, I'm looking it up. Yeah, uh, special edition. It was one million, and uh, you got. Hold on. Using my power of my potato internet. <laughs> It gave you a Saints Row 4 Commander-in-Chief Edition, the most important thing of the package, hmm. a full-size replica dubstep gun, a full day of spy training, a trip to space with Virgin Galactic, one year's membership of E25 Supercar Club and Lamborghini Gallardo to make it worthwhile, plastic surgery of the purchaser's choice, a shopping spree with personal shopper to create the ultimate Planet Saints capsule wardrobe, Seven nights for two at the Jefferson Hotel in Washington, hostage rescue experience, a brand new Toyota Prius and insurance to give something back to the environment, and seven nights stay in the top royal suite at the Burj Al Ab with flights for two. You know what? I can't find if anyone actually did bother to buy it. Fucking not boy, because with, if you've got that money and you want to do that shit, you just do that shit. I, to be fair, I think yeah. someone had kind of like someone had like put together an article sort of saying like, "Do not buy the one million Saints Row Four bundle," uh, and because he had like sort of totaled it up kind of thing, and he said like, you know, it only costs like six hundred, well, six hundred and thirty k to be able to get all of that. <laughs> yeah, and it was called the Super Dangerous Wad Wad Edition. <laughs> Right. Well, I mean, yeah, I just, that's that's good to know all that high level. So, I, I mean, have fingers crossed. You know, maybe someone will do another ridiculous thing like that in the future, and maybe There's a really some mug will buy it. Monopoly. Is that? Yeah, it's like the diamond edition, isn't it? Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a, let's have a look at that as well. You know, I'm I'm interested. And then we're it's, actually getting to the proper show. I'm pretty sure it's like gold plated diamond. Um. But I can't. I mm, hold on. Most, right, the world's most expensive Monopoly game on display. Oh, it's actually made out of gold. <laughs> Two million is how much it is. <laughs> it's gold and jewel encrusted. Oh man, amazing, amazing. Oh, and I, and I like Cody was sat off his saying on the Saints Row thing. He was like, How much of THQ budget went into that one? <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that maybe what uh, destroyed THQ? Them like getting that on standby, maybe. Like, <laughs> this is really dangerous because I've just found a website and across the whole right hand side of it. So I found the 10 most expensive Monopoly games, but then it's just the 10 most expensive calculators. The ten most expensive Casio watches. I'm gonna spend an hour on this thing just looking at bullshit <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. So, I mean, uh, I, I mean, for you, Mike, man, what was what was the kind of the show stealer for you? Was it Anthem as well, or? I really liked Anthem. I don't know. There wasn't the thing is there wasn't a show stealer for me. Mm. If I'm honest, I don't think there was one that. Really, like every year, there's one thing that I'm like, ah, oh, yes, this there wasn't one this year, to be uh... honest. Um, I think Anthem was probably the one I'm most anticipating. Um, but apart from that, I mean, uh, what was oh, there was one other fucking game, shit. I can't remember what it was. There was one other one that I was like, yeah, actually, that, that's got me interested now. Um, my juices are flowing a bit more. But yeah, I just, I don't know. It was more, it was more well-rounded this year. It's probably the best way to put it. It yeah. was like, you know, like the, the presentations were better and so on, but there wasn't any like jaw droppers, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Usually there's a couple that the fucking crowd go nuts for. Um, and I, obviously they had um, Beyond Good and Evil 2, but I didn't play the first one, so I wasn't really one of those people going fucking, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, and it was, you know, it was a CG trailer. Um, but yeah, I think I think probably Anthem. Battlefront 2, I think, um, could be really good. I, I liked what they did with that. I think they, they answered all the questions really well. What I think they possibly did wrong was they spent too much time doing it. You know, 
Was there any ridiculously awkward, embarrassing moments? Because they usually are. Need to speed. Oh, I wanted to talk about this. So oh, that God. guy. So Jesse Owens. Have you seen <laughs> what he said? No. What did he say? Okay, this is brilliant. So he said, he could be telling the truth, but I don't think he is. He said, in afterwards, he goes, I was really embarrassed or whatever, but what's the third highest trending video on YouTube right now? And all this and stuff. And he said, I'm not saying that I did it on purpose. And then winks. And it's like, mm, I don't think you did do it on purpose. But then again, your fucking videos have just got a fucking healthy dosage of people watching it. So what did he do? It's just like the most awkward. Like, I'm here to talk to you about uh, Need for Speed. Uh, uh, and then like this awkward handshake with the director and all this stuff. And kept calling him by his first name. But they obviously didn't know each other. And it was just, it, it just didn't work really. Um he didn't do anything wrong, really. He just forgot his lines and fucked up. But for someone that's, you know, YouTube or whatever, I suppose he gets to edit all his videos. He doesn't really do it live as much, so yeah, he would be nervous. But, yeah, he, he made out that basically he did it on purpose to get loads of views, which I'm sure he did get loads of views. It was number two or three on trending for YouTube for a while, so. Mm. Well, there we go. Maybe he was doing it on purpose. Bullshit. Yeah, I was, I was getting really excited about the new consoles that I won't be buying for many years to come. I'm that was so stuff, actually. Sorry. Xbox One X, I think, was really the thing that I, I, did, I got pumped up about. But it's weird, because it's never been like... There's always a PlayStation versus Xbox rivalry, isn't there? Mm. There's always like this versus that, and we make the comparisons. And like basically, like when that happens, we half our show is about who won the conference. Mm. This year, I don't think there was really a. It didn't feel like a PlayStation versus uh, Microsoft thing as much. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. I totally know what you mean. It it just sort of like they were I, I, because of the fact that you're right. You know, they they kind of ex well Microsoft had their whole you know console announcement and thing like where uh, comparatively you know Sony didn't necessarily announce anything that that big as such um so yeah it kind of um you couldn't really compare them <laughs> which was the which was the harder kind of thing for this uh, thing for E3 but and you know both of them were games 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 like they didn't really you know bother with anything else as well so yeah, I, I think I think good. Xbox have learned a lot from their previous one. Was it last two years ago now, where they went? Uh, oh no, it might even be longer ago. But they're basically just like sports, TV, lifestyle mm. stuff, and you're just like, no, no one's interested in that sort of stuff. Yeah. So they've obviously had a long scene, and, and now everything is focusing on the games. And I think it is definitely better for that. But one of the games that I am really, really looking forward to is the return of Seamus or Samus however you want to pronounce it, uh, in Metroid. Yeah. New Metroid. Very happy about that. But, I mean, you're going to need to get a uh, 3DS. I think that's where it is. Indeed. There's yeah. another console I need to buy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How old hey, that I was looking the other day. I, I was stood in the queue in game, and I saw second-hand Xbox Ones are 120 to 130 quid these days. We need to get you one of these new consoles. Well, I can't even call it a new console anymore. They've been out almost five years. Yeah, I know. We have to get you one. Will it work on your potato, though? Yeah. We, we've got to sort out Dave. We do. We vote, do. vote for Dave whether he should get an Xbox One or a Sony PlayStation. Is <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, in it? I'm I'm a big fan of the walkie roundy games, and there's uh, one from Gone Home uh, called Tacoma, which is like a set on a space station. That looks interesting, but I need to see more about it when it comes out. No, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Well, that's uh... oh, and obviously Wolfenstein too. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, no, you you definitely would be excited about that one. I forgot. I, I almost forgot about that one. I was I was watching the trailer going. The trailer was hilarious. I love their trailers. What I did find interesting though is that the um, lab that he wakes up in and walks around in is very similarly styled on the um, bio. Sorry, the System Shock Three that never happened. That there was in uh, plans. Four, and then there was the Bioshock and it was all meant to be underground and in Nazis and laboratories and stuff and all the artwork and the graphics for that suddenly are now in 
it's Wolfenstein, so yeah. interesting. But yeah. Anyway, should we move on and do other things? Yeah, man. Well, let's let's get in some some of them video games, man. So uh, let's go with the stag first. What's what's been going on video game wise, man? What you must been playing? Yeah, must been popping. Um, Overwatch mainly. I'm really getting into it. Um, I'm starting to get better. Is the honest answer to this? Um, I as well. I'm. I'm I'm kind of enjoying it, and like I'm learning how to play some of the characters I never really used before. So um, it'd be good. Like I'd, I'd like to see if we can get another game going, and maybe I've got a couple of other people that play, so mm-hmm. we can maybe get a little bit of a team going on Overwatch. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I haven't really had time. I've been so busy. Mm. Um, I played a little bit of. Oh, what was the other game I played? Fuck. Uh, you played, you I played, played um, ah, fuck, fuck, fuck. Played an old game because I was like really bored, so I downloaded a game for my um, PC. Um, uh, oh, Lion King, the Sega Mega Drive game. Yeah, <laughs> and it's impossible without a controller. Like fucking impossible, and or, or hard as it is anyway. But like I, I kept getting frustrated, and then it was like the king has returned, and I was like the king is dead. Fuck off. Okay, right. <laughs> yeah. um, but like it started yeah. a dangerous port, and I also downloaded Constructor, the original um, version. So I'm gonna have a little bash on that before I, at some point, will buy this new version and get disappointed with it by the sound things. Yeah, no, fair enough, man. Fair enough. Uh, well, let's. Uh... Move over to the uh, the Dave. La Dave. What's what's been, what's been cracking, dog? So I may have mentioned a couple of weeks ago that uh, Plants vs Zombies Heroes had recently just done an update where they brought out a Galactic Gardens edition. Uh, it's a hundred new cards, I believe, all based around a spacey theme. Um, they have lots of various nods to science fi uh, people. There's a Ming the Merciless, there's a Doctor Who, um, there's even a Terminator. There's a zombie that you, when you kill the zombie, it does a thing and then it picks it up and then it comes back as a sort of a much stronger Terminator, which I think is quite cool. Um, and so generally, this new expansion has been kind of well received, but they obviously didn't do much playtesting because a lot of the newer cards have either completely destroyed the older cards where at the point they don't longer work or the opposite has happened and made them amazingly broken. Um, There's a new infinite combo uh, that I've discovered the other day uh, through healing. You can infinite heal yourself and kill the other person at the same time, um, which is just nuts. But because there was a new expansion came out and then they... Uh, gave us a week to finish off the rank before they said, right, this is the end of season one, now we're going to kickstart season two. Uh, at the, When that happened, because I've been sort of slowly ranking up and sort of taking my time, because the game's been out for quite a year now, and mm. there wasn't any signs of it, the, the rank system going away. So I was just like, oh, I'll take my time, and eventually I'll get to the top. And then they were like, oh, you've got a week, guys. So I'm <laughs> like, well, shit. So for the last week, I've pretty much been doing nothing non-stop playing these games. Now, what makes it tricky is that there is a bug in the game that every now and then it will just randomly go, nope, we've decided to disconnect you. Usually when you're about to win, (laughs) which is massively frustrating. So you're like, I've won three in a row. I'm going to win this one. No, okay, I've lost. When you disconnect, you lose a star because of the, the, the level of the rank I'm at which makes grinding a little bit harder. Um, So I was initially started at rank 31 and I wanted to get to, and I was in Diamond League and at 40 you go to Taco League and at 50 you get the Ultimate League. And I was was like, well, I'm not going to get to 50 within a week, but I'll try and get to rank 40. And you have to win 10 matches and then you rank up a point. So at rank sort of 31, it's kind of like, what, 90 matches that I have to play and win. Uh, obviously, bearing in mind, if I lose one, 
that's another match that I have to play. So I have played a lot of Plants vs Zombies and Heroes, but I did it. I, I, I managed to do it yesterday. I hit Taco League. And then when you start Taco League, you have to win 20 games to get a point. So I'm like, well, I'm glad I'm not going for 50 because there's no way in hell I'm doing that in a day. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, so I was quite chuffed with that. And then today they said, OK, end of season one. Now you get your rewards. Turns out Diamond League and Taco League get the same fucking rewards. So all that <laughs> stuff that I put in to get to the next rank, completely pointless. <laughs> Good job. Not happy. Love it. But, you know, I get the sense of satisfaction that I managed to get to the sort of one below the top league. Uh, so I'm quite chuffed with that. But, yeah, the rewards that they gave you were woeful. Considering this has been out a year now, the rewards I got were six packs. Packs were a mix of the old cards and the new expansion. But they didn't tell you that. It, it looks like they're just the normal old cards. So for people like me who have a majority of the cards already, it, it, they're nothing. And I get a shiny badge. And that's it. And the amount of effort and time you have to put into it, you're like, surely you can get better stuff for this. So I'm a little bit annoyed. Um, the new season is shorter, but it's the same rewards. So I'm still not... I don't know how I feel about that. Right now, I'm kind of a bit pissed off, but uh, I'm yeah, sure I'm that surprised. You know, uh, it, it might, the anger might ever away, and I might start to enjoy it a bit more. And, you know, it's free stuff, and you can't not free stuff, but mm. could have been better. And especially the fact that the amount of effort that you have to go through from gold to get to, um, sorry, from diamond to get to taco, and the fact that you get the same rewards is kind of like, well, what's the point? Uh, you know, obviously you want to get through that to get to the, the, the highest one, but you'd think they would put better stages. I mean, it's even worse for the the um, is it wood, bronze, silver, and gold, the four first stages, all with the same rewards. So you have to sort <laughs> through all of that before you can actually get to the first tier. So whoever sat at them with the tier system, fucking sort it. <laughs> That's me, Liam. Fair enough. Well, I I couldn't because yeah, my my uh, I've just started up on Starbound again with a fuck a uh, couple of people uh, from the UK TM community. And uh, for those that don't, UK Tech Metal, I I go to a festival every year, and I've kind of got a big group of friends that I end up playing games with as well. Uh, I'll, I'll quickly switch over live in some sense to this is I'm actually on my server right now just to, to show that it is working. So the people that were waiting to get on my server, it's available now. <laughs> um, Good job. Yeah, we literally uh, just got back on this yesterday, of all things. Uh, so I've just been sort of like, uh, we've just started building in some sense on one of our planets. Uh, and we're, you know, we're just seeing what we can do. We've got, you know, one tenant so far as some sense for the uh, just sort of cpu kind of thing wise but i've just realized that our tenant here is struggling to get in look look at him he's he's trying to oh, he, you can't see it at the moment but he's trying to he's trying to get in but because we've got like a little lip uh there it's just it's not working it's not working so we're gonna have to redesign our house a little bit to get our tenant let our tenant in uh but i will do that later now, uh, for those that haven't played Starbound, I totally recommend it. It's a lot of fun. You know, kind of reminds me of like, uh, you know, uh, other games like it, sort of like Minecraft. But it, instead of it's not, you know, being a, a 3D game as such, it's sort of 2D, uh, sort of side scroller esque in some sense game. Kind of reminds me of like Tiaria as well. Um, but you know, you can do farming, questing. You can go to different planets. Uh, you know, where you can get, you know different loot and that as such uh yeah this is the one that if you follow the tutorial it gives you a sort of nice easy ramp of tutorial you know go make some wood go build a, a bed you know no build a house and all this and then it's like now just build this uh so antennae radar dish oh and here's an alien invasion just to completely fecking annihilate Mate, you. when when Surprise. we when we originally played it, because it was it was totally like that, Dave. Uh, it's it's changed a lot since then, mate. Uh, it really okay. has. Because uh, uh, I remember, you know, when we were kind of playing it at first, 
the yeah the difficulty did ramp ridiculously fast and you were just sort of yeah. like how the fuck can i beat these aliens and stuff yeah we had to get your brother in because he had better weapons and armor that's right he did now yeah it's completely different nowadays and like so much so that you can even get like a a mech uh, which is fucking awesome, by the way. Like, you can just do a tutorial right, think, after you get off your first planet to the Ark. Um, you can, uh, yeah, you, you just get given a mech, and the mech is fucking awesome just to be able to sort of go around and, like, dr drill down in and everything like that. But you can only have it out for, like, a limited time, but uh, it's always good fun to fuck about with it, for sure. Uh, but I mean, other than Starbound, let's have a look. What what was I saying? I can't even remember now because I was too busy trying to sort out my fucking server uh, that I forgot. Got, uh, Mirror's Edge Catalyst and Battlefield. Oh Four. yeah, that's it. I've started up Origin Access again, and uh, I was playing Battlefield Four first, uh, like for quite a bit as well. I just sort of like I because it was basically after. After I was at alt for the E three thing, um we, we were gonna sit there and play Battlefield four but it ended up taking a while to download and we didn't do it. But I I had already bought Origin Access at that point, so I was like, Well fuck it, let's let's download it on my machine and it's I've been weird. I've been totally getting into it, like big time. Uh, and the funny thing is, is that I've actually got, uh, I've got it on my PS4 as well. And before I went to the old thing, I was actually playing it on my PS4. And now I'm playing it on PC instead because it's just, oh, it's just so much better on PC to uh, just sort of play along with it. Um, but you know, like I did want to get Battlefield One because I still haven't necessarily got that yet, and uh, but I, you know, I think I'm probably going to pick that up soon because it's looking it's looking pretty cool, and you know, I'd like some more people to play with. Don't get me wrong, there's still a fucking solid player base for Battlefield Four. Um, you know, I'm I'm never struggling for you know to find people to play with, but uh, you know, it's always nicer to kind of have the newer one as such. We, uh, and I think with Battlefield One, just because of the, it is the older guns, and uh, stuff like that, I think I could probably get a bit more into it. Uh, What's your preferred role? Oh, I I, I mean, I've been, for on Battlefield Four, I've been playing Assault a lot. Um, but Assault kind of has like the, the meds, the defibrillator and stuff like that as well. So uh, I, I prefer kind of using that just because I, I'm, pr I'm pretty, sh I'm a shit shot really. So I'll just go around trying to heal my squad and stuff like that. Like like I kind of do on Overwatch with, when I'm playing with the stag <laughs> as well. Because uh, I am I'm awful at that game, but I can I I can heal. I know how to do that shit. And to be fair, we've we've got I I've got some games recorded when we were playing uh, the other week, um, where we were doing all right. You know, I'd say you know on a on a on my healing kind of level. And then I think I I think in one game, uh, what was it? I think you were. Oh, what's the turret guy? Not the Bastion. Bastion. That's it. Yeah, you were busting out Bastion, and I was sort of pumping you up, kind of thing, uh, like boosting you, uh, as well as like you know healing him as well. It was, and we were we were doing all right on that one as well. Yeah, we did all right. We didn't do uh, too bad. As a ex EA employee, Battlefield will always have a special place in my heart because I've worked on pretty much most of them. Um, I think I left just as Battlefield Four was coming out though. Um, but we used to love abusing the fuck out of those games. And one of the best things that we did until it got fixed was if you take a Jeep and the assault guys with the uh, the healing defibrators, you can drive around in the outside in the danger zone and just keep people alive with like chain um, healing. Mm. And so you sit in the car and so you get a sniper and basically you're just going around sniping people and they can't get to you because you're out of the game map. <laughs> There you go, top tip. Uh, top it tip doesn't work anymore. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> uh, and then, I, well, Mirror's Edge Catalyst, because it's on the uh, the list as such. I, I sort of, because um, uh, I absolutely love the original Mirror's Edge. Uh, it's sort of like, it hasn't necessarily had, I'd say, the biggest following. I think it's kind of like, it's a bit hit and miss with the community as such. And uh, I thought, you know what, I've got to give this second one a go. The second one is actually a prequel in the story. So in other words, it's kind of, you're still Faith as such, but it's, you know, set what, before the events of the, uh, the first game. And um, uh, I've, I've, put, I've put in like a couple of hours so far. And, uh, you know, I quite like uh, the, the way it's going in some sense, where the story is kind of building up. The only thing that I kind of find weird with this one is that, 
you're kind of building up your abilities as such. So, like, you know, with, like, the first Mirror's Edge, you didn't... You, you just had everything at the start. You didn't really... The, the, you just could do all the, you know, the jumping and stuff like that. You kind of have to unlock some things along the way. So, like, you can't do, like, a roll until you've upgraded and stuff like that. And you're like, just fuck off. You can fucking roll without, like, having to up, <laughs> update. Like, what the, what the fuck is that about? Like, I think yeah, they, they've, they've definitely fucked up on a couple of the things there, for sure. Like, was uh, it as bad as when they did that with Batman? When they did the, um, the uh, sequel to Batman, and then they made it a prequel, and then they basically made all his abilities better than what it would be in the previous the Arkham Asylums? Uh, I think on a combat level, you're you're definitely better. You know, like you can you, you can like punch, you can do like sort of side kicks and everything like that because you're having to actually battle a lot more um, mm. it, within this game. Because in the first one, you you avoided combat like the plague, and plus you couldn't pick you you could pick up weapons to fire and stuff like that. I haven't been able to pick up any weapons as of yet. So, in other words, I think that's what they've kind of been doing. I mean, maybe that's an upgrade later on that I haven't picked up yet. Uh, uh, it just makes, I love it when they do those sort of things where you get a, a prequel or a, you know to a game that's already come out and they kind of mess up the whole timeline. So either you suddenly forget a bunch of stuff, or you you know you know you have to gain a bunch of stuff that you know wasn't in the second one, and it just you know it doesn't there's an in, in, inconsistency there which always amuses me. Mm. so i mean yeah i'm definitely going to continue playing through it i i want to kind of get through to the end of it you know and check it out properly and then i i think you know after i have kind of got to the end of it i might look into possibly speed running the game because it's not too long of a speed run i think it's sort of like it's like a couple of hours so uh i mean yeah i'm gonna have to learn all the tricks and i think like i'm sure it's gonna take a while to be able to get down to that couple of hours kind of thing but i think it's sort of more doable than some of the other games that i've been looking at like i mean final fantasy 7 is still one that i want to give a shot and there is some really cool exploits within the steam version which i don't have as of yet because i ha i bought it when it was on um it was on the square enix store and conveniently, now I can't download it from there or anything. It's a right pain in the fucking ass. So I'm going to have to rebuy it uh, yeah. on Steam to be able to actually fucking Speaking do it. Speaking of Steam, mm. when's the summer sale? Uh, I don't think they've announced the date yet. And I don't think PayPal have leaked that yet. So Because it's, it's, <laughs> it's historically always PayPal <laughs> that, that leaks the Steam sale. Like, yeah. <laughs> It must be coming up soon, and they usually have some big event and going at the same time that you know collect flags or hats or mm. you know give gifts to friends and that allows you to pump up points, which you, you know little games you can play and all sorts of nonsense. <laughs> they like doing that. And sort points of mean prizes. Mm. Yeah. Like Cody's just said, no save a Final Fantasy VII run, but you can't. And I was just well, the thing is, is that if I want to do the exploits that I'm talking about, it's all about saves. So uh, if I was to do an actual like no save for Final Fantasy VII run, that would be hours. I'd probably die while I'm doing it. Do you reckon you could do it? Fifteen hours? Twenty hours? Uh, I th I've seen times uh, like for just like I well I I don't know if it's a no save run but without the without doing those particular exploits it's sort of around I think it's eight hours or so I reckon it'd probably take me uh, I don't know I I'd I'd probably say fifteen twenty maybe if I really pushed it uh, I don't know I don't know I'd have to have a look but. I just don't know. I, I'm not sure if I could just stay there for that long and, and do that. I think it would just destroy my soul. <laughs> I don't know, but we're definitely... I will get into speed, speed runs at some point. I want to do it. Um, I've actually been looking... Because I was talking about Super Hot the other week. Super Hot seems like a very doable speed run as well. Um, so I, I might give that a shot as well. So watch the space. Maybe Leon will be speed running soon. <laughs> Speaking of speed running, my mouse decides to kick back in. There we go. <laughs> so the game that I mentioned, I oh know, my computer. So I haven't touched my computer for at least five minutes, so it just goes into sleep mode. Bastard thing. Uh, this game that called You Have to Win the Game. Do you remember me talking about this? Oh, yes. No, I do remember you talking about this game. 
there's a uh, achievement uh, called places to go, people to see. You have to beat the game in under 10 minutes. My quickest I've done it is 11 minutes and something or other. I was oh. so fucked off. Oh man, so that's not bad point. though. You're not far off. You only have to shave off, you know, like a minute or so. Yeah, is it, there's a couple of rooms that are an absolute nightmare that you have to get perfect, and if you screw it up, it sets you back at least a minute or so before you, because of where the save points mm. are. Um, but yes, so that is one that I will be attempting with the speed run. I've pretty much got all of them, other than. Um, there's a it's uber hard mode where basically you've got one life. That ain't happening. Yeah. And one where you play it as a cat and you have nine lives, which I might give a go just for a giggle, but that might also be equally as tough. But yeah, so uh, you never know. I might try this whole speed run thing as well. Uh, sorry, I just I just got a giggle at something. It's just I, you know I'm faffing about on the internet at the same time as we're doing on this and. Uh... I just saw uh, an article on the Metro uh, saying NASA wants to probe deeper into Uranus than ever before. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, God. Oh, wow. God. Oh, oh man. That's, that's, that's made my day, that has. That, that... <laughs> well, on that note, uh, let's move into some news. News! Uh, Minecraft, you know, obviously, uh, at the uh, Microsoft conference, the whole big thing there, they were saying, uh, you know, on the Minecraft kind of things, were saying, yeah, we're going to be doing that cross play with everyone. Everyone, we're saying, not everyone. everyone. I think they, they were kind of trying to goad PS4, or also rather Sony, into kind of going with it because there is a little, little thing that they were a bit like, uh, You've got to log into Xbox Live uh, on all participating platforms. So Nintendo Switch is definitely going to be having it, but you're going to have to have an Xbox Live login to be able to play with everyone else uh, cross-platform. It's so that, you know, uh, Microsoft can secure, uh, whether so they know who everyone is so that they can necessarily play together. Uh, yeah, Sony have gone. Nah, we're not having that. We don't want. Uh, we don't want you to sign into Xbox Live at all. Uh, we don't want to do this. <laughs> and the reason, understandable. The reason why uh, they they kind of came out and said, well, you know, we've kind of we've got a contract with all of our our players as such. Uh, we can't necessarily uh, manage, you know, uh, the the Minecraft community as such as the way we want. Uh, because of you know having to log into the Xbox Live thing, it means that it's a, it's a it's a variable that they can't manage as such, and that's why they they don't necessarily want to do it. And yeah, uh, yeah no, I can kind of understand uh, on, on that kind of level. But I mean, surely you know I think Xbox Live are going to be pretty hot on that kind of shit as well. You know, on their you know on their community as well. I, I mean, uh, maybe not as stringent as Sony. Who knows? I'm sure it probably would be, but. I, I think Sony are kind of copping out maybe a little bit. I reckon they can work with them a bit more anyway. Uh, I mean, like, for instance, uh, for instance, I mean, Rocket League, that, that's fucking cross-platform with everything. What's, what's the problem there? Like, why can't, why, why can't we all be friends? <laughs> why can't Mario we wants money. be friends? <laughs> why can't we be friends? Uh, yeah, it's a shame. Now, let's move on to uh, Destiny news, and uh, I, I thought this is quite interesting, this one. Uh, I mean, obviously, we knew that, you know, like with the last Destiny, they were going to be doing uh, the, the PS4 exclusives. Uh, they're going to be definitely coming out uh, next year on Xbox One and PC. Uh, they definitely said it was sort of, it would be, the earliest it would be would be fall uh, 2018. Um, so yeah, it's, it sounds about right. Year exclusivity. That's kind of usually what happens. Uh, they've also said about it's going to be 30 FPS on consoles and it's going to be uncapped on PC. Um, the, uh, this is the more interesting thing that I thought was that the, you know, the new guided games that they were going to be doing as such where it means that, uh, if you wanted to do a raid as such, and you've got like a clan, you've only got like four people or something you can necessarily post out to be able to say, oh yeah, let's do some kind of matchmaking as such to be able to kind of get those extra two players. Mm. 
but apparently it's not going to be included for heroic activities. So you can do like a raid on normal as such, but if you ever do want, want to do it on heroic uh, or you want to do the, uh, the nightfall, which is a heroic thing, um, you will still need to do it properly uh, as such. Uh, and like you'll have to do the, the, what we've been doing before on Destiny. You'll have to get the, your people together and just go for it. You can't do matchmaking I can, on I can that. see arguments for and against that in the sense that it makes sense because you're doing a heroic thing so you don't just want some sort of nab dropping in and fucking it up for everyone. But at the same time, if you have no friends and you want to do heroic activities, then it might be kind of tricky. It's a pain in the ass. It's a massive pain in the ass. Yeah. I mean, like... I still haven't, like, on the on the, well, the Destiny that we have now, I still haven't done the latest raid. I, I, I literally haven't done it yet because, I, I mean, I could probably find a game, but I really wanted to do it with people I knew it knew first. I didn't want to, like, just go on, like, Destiny, LFG, you know, the websites kind of thing where you can kind of find people to kind of do it with. I really wanted to do it with people I knew, but all of the people that I know, I just... I'm not really playing it anymore. So uh, I've just lost out on that kind of content. I, I really do need to just go on Destiny LFG and just sort it out. But uh, but the way they kind of do things now, it doesn't. you don't really need to do the new raid unless it sort of comes around in rotation for that week. It, I mean, you can do it any time, obviously. But um, there's sort of like, there's a, extra kind of benefits for doing that the raid of the week as such. Uh, we have lost Michael. Awesome. There's always has to be one dropout during an episode. I, I don't know what's like going on. Honestly, like, it, like the, the, the podcast has descended into chaos uh, on a technical level recently. I have no idea what's going on. Amazing. Uh, now, we've got half of you on one screen, half of you on the other, um, but we'll continue anyway. And uh, we've got the uh, the beta for Destiny 2. Uh, that's going to be beginning on consoles. Oh, sorry, rather it's got PS4. It's the 18th of July. Uh, I'm totally going to sign up for that. The Xbox, July 19th. And then on PC in August. They've just said August. They haven't kind of given a date on that. Yet. You can't do yeah, it unless cause... you've got a console, mate. <laughs> no, no, I can do the PC one. I think you need to pre-order. It's a pre-order beta. Damn it, but the, the, the original Destiny wasn't, because I remember being on the uh, beta for that. No, you're right, the original wasn't, but this one, they said it was it was meant to be a pre-order beta. I could be wrong, though. They might release it out to everyone else eventually, but I know at, yeah, at yeah. first it's definitely a pre-order beta. Oh, you never know. I keep my ears to the ground. I might be able to steal a key off someone. Yeah. Good nature. Well, I mean, it's coming out on consoles uh, on the 6th of September, and then on PC, it's coming out on the 24th of October. So you don't have to wait too much longer uh, to play it on okay. PC. Um, now, I thought this was uh, some rather interesting news, that uh, Atari are back, guys. That's right. They have teased a new console in the first time in over 20 years. See... So you- I knock Atari, but they did bring out some amazing groundbreaking games back then that were kind of like the predecessor's predecessor to some of the more uh, sort of the type of games that we have today. So, you know, if it wasn't for Atari, we wouldn't have half the stuff that we have now, in theory. Um, And, you know, they were some amazing games that just took up hours of your time. And it was also at a time when the console it was a lot of them were two player and it was the sort of because you mentioned this last week as well the, the coming of friends together you know coming around and playing games and i remember going around to um my friend's house when we were little kids and sitting there and just playing atari all day you know and it was two fucking sticks on a screen shooting at each other but it was amazing fun you know and you used your imagination for the majority of the time so it's interesting to see and then obviously atari went a bit off the rails <coughs> <Jaguar. coughs> So it'd be interesting to see what they can come back and bring back to the, the table after all this time, whether or not there will be the creepy old grandpa that comes out at Christmas and everyone just sort of remembers the good old days of how he's amazing, but please go away now because you smell of off. Uh, yeah. Or whether he's going to be the cool granddad that is like, yeah, we haven't seen you for years and you always bring the cool presents. So we'll have to see. Yeah, I mean, I, I've I reckon they're probably going to be doing something along the kind of the SNES 
uh, you know, kind of thing. You know, like what Nintendo did, you know, bring, well, rather it was the, the NES, actually. They, they kind of redid it into sort of a smaller version. I reckon that's what we're going to see Atari-wise. I think it'll just be... Yeah, but the Sega did one as well. You can buy, like, a, a Sega for 50 quid that has all the Sega games on it, and you plug it into your TV. And then there was the Spectrum one that was pretty much the same thing uh, that cost stupid amounts of money. And everyone just went, uh, no. I'll just get out my old spectrum from the attic. Thank you very much. And do the same sort of thing. Yeah. Um, let me see what they do, but it will probably come with a hefty price tag because it seems that that's the thing these days is that you get retro, but you have to pay through the nose for it. And then you always get the argument of, well, if you work it out for the money from the, that back then, it works out the same. And you're like, no, go away. Shut up. <laughs> Right. Well, let's see. Let's go. I'm just going to quickly message Mike and see what's going. Okay. Oh, he got a blue screen. That's what he got. Uh, well, on that uh, note, I'm going to go and do things. I'll be back momentarily. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it's just me then. While we're waiting, uh, Cody, you still there in the chat? Uh, I see that you were kind of saying about the you think it was the Atari 8000, uh, which I thought that was that's pretty funny. But no, it's called the Atari Box, is what they're calling it. But they haven't uh, they've kind of done a little video which doesn't really give us too much, other than you can see some sort of wood grain design. Um, but we will we'll see what necessarily happens on that kind of level. Uh, I just want to quickly go on to uh, let's uh, say about Starbound once again. Uh, if anyone does want to play on my Starbound server, literally do just drop us a message and uh, I can give you the details and you can come on the server and join us. Uh, I haven't got a massive of space uh, on it, but um, if you do want to play with us, uh, you're definitely more than welcome. Uh, I've called it my uh, UKTM uh, Starbound server. Um, you won't be able to find it out there, so you'll have to message me specifically. So if you just message the uh, Game Over Year chat, uh, oh sorry, the Game Over Year uh, things like Go Over Year for our Twitter or something like that, you'll be able to kind of get all the details there. So um, yeah, definitely check it out. Uh, we definitely want more people to play with, so uh, yeah, come and join us for sure. Pro tip, before doing any sort of podcasting, recording or anything like that, make sure you don't drink vast quantities of 7up. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, I feel better now. Good man. Good man. Are we still micless? We are still micless. Uh, so what we'll do is, well, I suppose we'll just get to our last bit of news and maybe wrap it up. Uh, I would have thought. Uh, I'm, the only problem is that I've still got half of you and half on one screen, so I'm just going to minimise your video for now, so you're just not visible. Dave is not visible right now. Oh, okay. I can get naked now. You can, you can, but then I'll just bring it back up after that. Uh, <laughs> on the the last okay. bit of news oh. that I've got uh, for this week, we've got uh, Pokemon Go uh, are revamping a lot of stuff. Uh, revamping the gyms, they're adding co-op raids and that as well. Uh, Is this a desperate bid to try and get people playing their game again? I think some people still are playing it. I still see, like, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not, it's not as like well as you know. It's it's not as good as I did see it. If you know what I mean. Where I used to mm. see like a lot of people updating and like you know, put sort of going, oh, I've just caught this Pokemon on their Facebook and stuff like that. Um, but now you know it's kind of died to death a little bit. But here we go. You know, maybe this is going to kind of bring some people back because of the fact that you're going to have that kind of co-op element and raids. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think the co-op thing is definitely something that a lot of people were really keen on having. The fact that you can, you know, battle other. But the, I think the other thing is one people want is that you can battle other, um, what they're called trainers. Not just in a gym, but just you know, just out in the field. Hopefully, that'll be something that can potentially come in another update. You know, make it more sort of Pokemon esque. Yeah, uh, Mike has said that he thinks his laptop is overheated. Sorry, guys. So uh, <laughs> we're definitely not getting. But that makes sense. You know, being a hot sunny day. Mm? No, no, definitely, definitely. Uh, but rest in peace, uh, Mike's laptop. <laughs> <laughs> well on that note uh, i think we should probably wrap up the show on the, on that on that epic failure for the end of the show once again <laughs> coming soon next week's show who knows which one of us will lose connection who's my cool fail 
I know, right? Yeah. We just need to. We need to. I don't know. We we all need reliable computers of some sort. We need to. We need to fix. I, I, I'm not fix tempting it. fate. I'm not saying anything to them. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, if you'd like to take part in the conversation, give a post on our Facebook wall at facebook.com forward slash game over here. You can tweet us using at GoVR, and you can also follow us on Twitch at www.twitch.tv slash GoVR, which is pointless if you're already watching on Twitch, because you've done that. And if Mike was here, he'd also say, subscribe on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash user forward slash UK, and you can also drop us an email at contact us at gameoveryear.net. But please, no spam, love emails. We've got enough of those already. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, like, I got an amazing spam email today, uh, you know, about... Uh, what was it? I can't even remember what it was. I think it was something about... Uh, there was MILFs or something like that as well. It was lovely. Uh, like, um, brilliant. Because uh, everyone wants MILFs, right? Uh, <laughs> and uh, a big shout out to Cody once again for joining us. Uh, it, Thanks, and, Cody. Honestly, we're we're going to be here every every Monday uh, at eight thirty p.m. BST at the moment GMT when it switches over again. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, honestly, definitely uh, come and join us every week on Twitch. Uh, but uh, as we have kind of said, it is there on YouTube and everything else afterwards. And uh, if you want, you can go on our website, which is gameoveryear.net, where you can find all of the lovely links that we were just talking about. Uh, thank you for joining us, and until next time, Game, game Over, over yeah. yeah! 